All right, this is Theo Landon for MMA Island. I'm here with Corey Anderson ahead of his title fight rematch with Vadim Nemkov. Corey, it's good to see you, but I have to ask you before we get started. You've made the rounds on social media today and this week for something that's on your hand. Can you show the camera for us real quick? Can we see that? What's the official diagnosis on that, man? What did the doctor say that is? A ruptured tendon. So I guess when I threw the uppercut, it must have landed like here and it ruptured the tendon here and it rolled up. So now it's here and the rest is just scar tissue from banging in and punching. It's just all full up in one spot now. But you mentioned that it doesn't really hurt anymore, right? It's not really a big injury for you? It's a rock hard. I can't even feel it. All my other hands, fingers hurt, but that finger has no pain at all. So going back to your last fight, obviously, like we said, this is a rematch. Uh, Vadim Nemkov is always a tough guy out, but it seemed like you were winning the fight before the unceremonious headbutt, a no contest result in that. What did you learn about Vadim in that fight? I learned from him. He was, he was still there. You know, most guys, when I'm putting that pace on them, they... They, you see my previous fights in Bellator, none of them went to the third round. It was all three round fights except for Bader and Yags. But Yags, I put him out in the beginning of the third, and then Bader was the first round, and Man Who for the second round. It's usually like when I put that pace on you and that pressure, they usually dwindle down fast, they kind of give up. Bader happened to get caught. It's like I don't count that as domination. They're like, oh, you dominated Bader. Like, no, I caught Bader. The rest of them, I dominated those guys. And as for Nimkov, I was in the way, of, I was on the way for the domination to take in, but it would have been the fourth round before I possibly broke him, which showed me he was a little more conditioned and ready than most people. Right, it's kind of a unique situation because that last fight was the final of the light heavyweight Grand Prix. Obviously, the winner would take the belt and the million dollar cash prize, but since it was a no contest, he keeps the belt. Neither of you were able to earn that money, but for this fight, they're putting the million dollars back on the line. They didn't really have to do that, but they thought it was the right thing to do. What does that mean to you that the promotions want to give you that fair of a shot? I feel like it was the only right thing to do. It's a tournament. The tournament never concluded. The tournament prize wasn't the Grand Prix. The Grand Prix belt is only in the light heavyweight belt, but one of the prizes that everybody was looking forward to was a million dollars. So it's kind of hard for you to give the belt and the Grand Prix belt without that million dollars. That was the tournament. That's the tournament. Neither one of us could fight anybody else in 205 until the tournament was concluded. So if that's the case, we should get the same payment. So for me, I'm happy to do it, and I think it's, that just means a lot and that we got good, honest employers and the boss and promotion that we're with they would keep that up. Now, if they were to turn around, like, oh, we're not giving it to you no more, that would show you that these are kind of like some snakes. That's not That's not right. That's not honorable. Right. But now we know we're in a good place. And so you came over from the UFC, you were winning on there, and you came over here and you're still winning. And so there's also a three-headed monster in the UFC right now between Blahovich, Prohaska, Teixeira. Obviously, you and Nemkov are also world-class fighters. Do you feel like this fight decides who the number one light heavyweight in the world is? Well, I've said it way before this, this fight when I first got into Bellator. When everybody came over, look at the top five guys in Bellator, and four or three or four of those guys have beat the current champ who was Glover at the time. Me, Rumble, and Phil Davis. And Bader also fought him, and Bader was winning. He just got caught with a big shot. And to see, when he was a champ and us three was in there, and we all already dismantled him and beat him, it's kind of like, it was kind of hard to say that you got a top when that's a champ, but three of us have already beat him. And then now, Yuri, you see, Glover was beating Yuri. I feel like he was doing pretty damn well. He had it until he slipped up and gave up his neck. So 100%, now we're just gonna solidify it. That's all this fight is doing, solidifying the best. Other than that, we already know, the people already know, nobody's gonna say it because UFC is promoted for. But it ain't about promoted, it's about them stats. Compare yours to, uh, compare and contrast. Who literally has the best? Do you have any sort of aspirations about if you win this belt, would you be interested in doing any cross promotion with other promotions to kind of prove that, you know, Bellator is the number one. You want to solidify that in the uh, minds of the fans. I'm down to fight whoever to just show, like, how good I am, how great I am. It doesn't even have to be just to prove Bellator has the best, just for me, just to keep proving, like, I know I can beat these guys at the ground deck and show them, like I told you. I told you, I knew it my whole time. I knew it myself I could do it. That would be great. So I'm down to fight whoever if they allow it. You're doing well at 205, like we mentioned. You're also pretty decently sized for the division. Do you have any uh, aspirations, maybe in the future, down the line, of moving up to heavyweight? Do you see those guys as a challenge to you? Uh, 100% I will go up. The opportunity comes after I got the belt here. Once I finish business at 205, I got more business to handle somewhere. You know, you can only defend your belt so much until it's kind of like, all right, I'm fighting the same people again. So then it'd be time to move up to 205. Or if something happened where 205 is at a standstill and nobody earned a title shot against me while I have the belt, then yeah, let's move up. I have no problem. I walk around like 235 training. If I stop training, I can get a 240 easy. I debut fighting at heavyweight. My first fight at 205 wasn't until the Austin fighter. So I can go back easy. I wrestled heavyweight my whole life. So there's nothing to put the weight back on and get the strength up. 
All right, Corey, last question before we let you go. Assuming you get the victory on that night, you wake up the next morning, what does the headline read? Corey Anderson gets it done. He is now the official and new. All right, Corey, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you.